Hello and good afternoon friends, welcome to CEC Live Lectures. Dear friends, today in this session we are going to talk on one of the most interesting topics. Though we have talked um, on the particular topic in, uh, in our previous sessions also, but today uh, we would going to revive uh, your thoughts once again as our objective is to aware you with the disease called cancer. Uh, the topic today is, is an introduction to cancer. We would be talking on anatomy, biology as well as treatment of cancers. And for this discussion, we have once again with us in our studios, Dr. Amit Bhattacharya. Dr. Amit Bhattacharya is Assistant Professor in Department of Zoology, Ramdis College, University of Delhi. Dear friends, if you want to ask questions from Dr. Amit Bhattacharya on the particular topic that is on cancers, then you can call right in the CEC studio. You can contact us through our toll-free number. Our number is 1-800-110-430. I repeat, our number is 1-800-110-430. You are requested to call in the last 10 minutes of the lecture so that first you can have the insight into today's topic and afterwards, of course, we promise you to give answers to your questions. So, let's welcome our guest, Dr. Amit Bhattacharya and uh, let's try to have insight into today's topic. Hello, Thank sir. You, welcome to Thank you very much. Dear viewers, in this part of the lecture, I will be talking about what exactly the cancer is, what are the various types of the cancer, we will discuss about the anatomy of the various types, then subsequently I will go about how exactly these uh, cancer cells spread out in the body, which is the stage which is called as the metastatic stage and subsequently I will go into the, the treatment regimes part. So before going into the cancer part, well, let's define what exactly the cancer is. So cancer is basically the abnormal growth of the cell. So any part of the cell, bo body cell which grows abnormal and rapidly creates a abnormal mass of the cell is called as the cancerous cells. They subsequently invade the adjoining parts of the body and this particular thing is called as the metastasis. Now, the metastasis are the major cause of the deaths from the cancer. Now, before going into the subsequent anatomy, biology and the treatment regimes, I will just make you well versed with some of the definitions, some of the terms which will be used subsequently. The first term which will be used is the oncology. So oncology is the branch of medicine which deals with the etiology, diagnosis, treatment and prevention of cancer. Onco is basically a Greek word which means tumor. The, what, uh, the cancer word has been derived from a Latin word which is called as cancum which means crab. Now cancer is a group of disease characterized by uncontrolled cell division leading to growth of abnormal tissues or tumor. Now, uh, if we see some of the figures which have been released by the American Cancer Society, the global cancer trend from the 2012 to 2030 has been projected to increase by about 50 percent. So, worldwide the cancer cases will improve, increase from 14 million to about 21 million cases from in the year 2030. While the projected cases uh, which are related to the cancer deaths from 2012 to 2030 has been said to increase by 60% which means that 8 million deaths which occurs in 2012 will increase to 13 million deaths. So we can just see how the amount on the how the deadly disease is increasing day by day. Now if we go into the oldest description of the cancer we go into the way back to 3000 BC where uh, in the Egypt manuscripts it has been described the, the, the cancer but even though the word cancer has not been used over there. Subsequently the word uh, cancer came up from a uh, physician uh, his name was Greek physician Hippocrates. In the year between uh, 460 to 370 BC he, uh, Hippocrates originated with the word cancer. Hippocrates is regarded as the father of medicine and he used the various terms such as the carcinos and carcinoma to describe the non-ulcer producing and ulcer forming tumors. 
Between the year 200 to 28 BC, Roman physician Celsius and the Greek physician, they describe the various words such as the cancer and the onchos which describe tumors. Now, the WHO projections, if we see the WHO projections, in the year 2012, about 8.2 million deaths occurs because of cancer. Of which 60% of the world's total new annual cases occur in Africa, Asia, Central and South America. About 30% of these cases could be prevented if they are detected at the early stages. So that's the statistics which the World Health Organization has released. Now, if we see the statistics of all the cancer, excluding the non-melanoma skin cancer cases, we can see there is a drastic increase over the years. Now, if we see the uh, world population which have been affected by the cancer, especially the men population, it is being said that about 74 lakh cases occurs annually, of which there the deaths in the case of the men is 46 lakh cases. While in the women, about 66 lakh cases have been reported, while the deaths is about 35 lakh cases. In India, if we see, the number of cases in the men reported in the year 2012 has been 4 lakh cases, approximately 4 lakh cases, of which the death occurs in the 3 lakh cases. While in the case of women, about 5 lakh 37,000 cases have been reported, while the deaths have occurred in the 3 lakh 26,000 cases. So, we can see a large proportion of the worldwide uh, cases of cancer have been coming up from the Asian, Central, American and the other parts of the world. Now, Let's come into the types of cancer. What are the basic types of the cancer? So, there are the types of the cancer are classified by the types of the cell in which they have originated and the location of the cell. Now, in the cell, the epithelium cell which uh, are majorly uh, present in the digestive tract, these types of cancer are called as the carcinoma. While in the case of the blood cells, majorly the white blood cells, or the red blood cells, it's called as the leukemia, while if the site is the lymph nodes, it is called as the lymphoma, where the cells are the lymphatic cells, while if the it is caused in the connective tissue, majorly the bones and the muscles, it is called as sarcoma. In the skin, if it is called, it is called as the myeloma, while in the germ cells, especially the testes and ovary, it is called as the teratoma. So, by these ones, we can classify the various types of the cell which have got affected. Now, if we see the worldwide most common form of cancer which have been reported in the WHO report 2012, it is accounted that about 8.2 million deaths have occurred in 2012. The most common cause of cancer deaths are the cancer of lung which contributes to about 1.59 million deaths, liver which contributes to 7,45,000, stomach which contributes to 7,23,000, colorectal which contributes to 6,94,000, breast cancer which contributes to 5,21,000, esophageal cancer which contributes to 4 lakh cases. So we can see these are the majorly the six main types of the cancers which are spread out of which the lung cancer is the most reported one across the globe. Now, over here I have shown some of the pictures of the cancer cell. So, the first picture which I am showing is the cancer cells in the liver. So, if we can see, we can see in some of the parts there is an uncontrolled growth. And subsequently, when the cross section or the histological sectioning of these tissues were done and they were stained, we can see the tumor cells which are widely spread out while we can compare them with the normal cells which are evenly spread out. So, we can easily make out that these part of the cell uh, organs or the glands have been affected by the cancerous cells. Now, the first picture which is shown, the second picture which is shown over here is a lung cancer which uh, in which we can see the lung which has been infestated with a large number of cancerous cells and they have grown over there. Now, the second picture is shown is a stomach cancer which uh, is shown over here and this is an endoscopic image which have been shown in which we can see the stomach 
cells have got into an uncontrolled growth and there is a mass or the tumor which has grown in that particular area. The third picture is a colorectal cancer in which a tumorous growth can be seen and the last picture is an oral cancer which is the cancer of the mouth. We can see there is a growth of the cell within the mouth. So these are the various uncontrolled growth sectioning which have been shown in the diagrammatic representation. Now what are the various hallmarks of the cancer? So the hallmarks of the cancer are some of the uh, processes which the cancer cell evades. So first uh, the cancer cell evades the apoptosis process. Apoptosis is basically the programmed cell death which means that all these cells have been programmed to die after a particular age or particular time. So the cancer cells evade this apoptosis process so it can, they can grow in an uncontrolled fashion, in an infinite fashion. Subsequently, they have got a self-sufficiency in growth signal. So they can modulate the growth signals and they can develop easily. The third hallmark feature is the insensitivity to anti-growth signal. So the anti-growth signal which are developed in the body to stop or inhibit the growth of the cells are uh, the cancerous cells become insensitive to these anti-growth signal. The fourth feature is the tissue invasion and metastasis. We will discuss about these in subsequent slides. The fifth one is the limitless replicative potential. So the DNA develops a potential to replicate in a number of copy numbers even though mutations have occurred. So the mutations are replicated in the daughter cells also. And the last one is the sustained angiogenesis process. Angiogenesis process is basically the development of the blood tissues, vessels at the point where the tumorous cells have grown. Now, if we see the overview of the tumor formation, the tumor formation have been broadly classified into four major stages. The first one is the mutation where a series of mutation occurs to eliminate the restraints of the cell division. So the cells which were controlled in a very controlled fashion so that it cannot grow in an uncontrolled way, those particular processes are eliminated. Subsequently, the cells start growing in a larger number or they proliferate quickly and they replicate quickly. And what happens in this tumor growth is there is a process of angiogenesis which occurs in which the new blood vessels start developing over that particular area. The third particular step which is called as the intravasion where these uh, primary tumor cells start getting evaded from that particular area and with the help of the blood vessels they move to the some other or the distinct part of the cell and they start growing over there. So these spread of these malignant cells basically takes place with the help of the blood vessels and the lymphatic system. And the fourth one is the metastasis. The malignant cells become established in a distinct organ and they start growing over there. Now if we see the uh, uh, animated uh, picture over here, it shows that how exactly the tumor growth and the metastasis occurs. So in the first uh, uh, stage which we discussed is there is some kind of mutation which occurs. So we can see in this cell the mutation has occurred. Subsequently, this mutation grows into tumor growth and by the tumor growth, they subsequently invade into the blood vessels. From the blood vessels, they invade into some other parts of the body and this process is called as the metastasis. So all the four stages of the cancers, which is the mutation, tumor growth, invasion and the metastasis can be seen from this animated picture. Now we come into the next particular uh, important uh, mechanisms which develops in the cancer growth which is called as the angiogenesis and tumor growth. So the primary tumors are shown in this picture and over there we can see a blood vessels which is flowing. As these tumor cells are growing they will be requiring oxygen and nutrition for their growth and proper sustenance. So what happens is new blood vessels from the flowing blood vessels start growing into 
these particular areas. Now in these areas the blood vessels flows into and these primary tumor cells are then supplied with the oxygen and the nutrients for their growth and proper functioning. So this particular process is called as the angiogenesis. Now what happens is these primary tumor cells they start in evading from these areas and with the help of the blood vessels they move into the blood vessels and through the blood vessels they go into the some other parts of the body and this movement of the primary tumor cells from one part of the body to the other part of the body is called as the metastasis. Now in the uh, cancerous cells one of the major phenomenon which is changed it is called as the cell cycle stages. So before going into how exactly the cell cycle is modulated in the cancer cells we should know what exactly the cell cycle is. So cell cycle is basically each of these cell is programmed to grow and develop in a particular phase wise manner. So over here the cell cycle is divided into two major phases. The first phase is called as the prophase. The other phase is called as the M phase which is the dividing phase or mitotic or the meiosis stage. Now the prophase is further divided into three major categories. The first one is called as the G1 phase which is the first growth phase in which the cell copies the organelles and increases its rates of a, a, processes. The second phase under the cell cycle comes is called as the S phase where the DNA synthesis occurs. So the cell DNA copies into a number of copy number. The third phase is called as the G2 phase where the second growth develops and the cell continues to copy its organelle and increases size and it gets ready for the subsequent division process which takes place in the M phase. Now how exactly the cancer cells are related to these cell cycles. So we will come into the molecular events that controls the progression through the cell cycle. Now what happens is over here I have shown in a diagrammatic representation what exactly the cell cycle is. So we discussed that the cell cycle is broadly classified in two major stages the prophase and the M phase. While the prophase is divided into three subphases, which is G1, S, and G2 phase. Now, in the G1 phase, the cells start getting prepared for its subsequent growth and division process. In the S phase, the DNA replication takes place, so its DNA copy number increases. While in the G2 phase, the cell goes into the metastatic uh, mitotic stage or the division phase. Now each of these phases are controlled at a point which is called as a checkpoint. So a cell which is in a G1 phase when it has to go into the S phase there is a checkpoint which is present. So a cell which has produced all the mechanisms for the division for the uh, DNA replication will only move from the G1 phase to the S phase. So there is a checkpoint which checks that whether all the machineries have been properly formed or not then only this cell will move from the G1 to S phase. While from the S to G2 phase there is another checkpoint which is there which checks that whether all the DNA replication has occurred or not. If there is no DNA replication which has occurred it does not allow the cell to move from the S to the G2 phase. Likewise there is checkpoint from G2 to M phase likewise for the other phases. So the checkpoints are basically the boundaries which checks whether the cell has done all its processes in that particular phase properly or not. If not it goes back to that particular stage it completes the processes and then comes into the next stages. Now over here if we can see the diagrammatic representation the checkpoints are basically controlled with the help of the cyclins and the CDK which are basically the cyclin dependent kinases. So cyclin dependent kinases are basically the kinases which phosphorylate specific proteins which helps to allow the cell to move from one particular phase to the other phase. Now these cyclin dependent kinases are active only when they are attached to particular proteins which are called as the cyclin. So cyclins helps in the transformation of the cell from one phase to the other phase in that particular stages. Now 
over here if we see from the G1 to S phase there is a checkpoint which is called as the G1 S checkpoint which is shown over here. So the G1 cyclin is produced at the end of the G1 phase. So the cells start producing this G1 cyclin. What happens is this G1 cyclin comes and binds to the CDKs and as soon as it binds to the CDK, the CDK become active. So CDK is basically the cyclin dependent kinase. What it does is it phosphorylates certain proteins within the cell which helps to cross the G1 to S phase. Now as the cell has moved from the G1 to the S phase, these cyclins which have been produced in the G1 phase get degraded so that cell doesn't have any G1 cyclins present in it. Now the cell gets prepared into the S phase or the synthesis phase and from the synthesis phase as it comes near to the G2 phase again the cyclins which are very specific to the S phase are produced and subsequently the checkpoints are released likewise from the G2 to M phase this happens. So these cyclins and the CDKs plays a very important role in defining or the transferring of the cell from one particular phase to the other phases. So this is how the cells uh, are controlled in a molecular fashion with the help of the cyclins or the CDK or the cyclin dependent kinases. Now in a normal cell if we see how the cell growth is controlled if we see the cell division is induced by certain growth factors. So in a cell which has to grow there are certain growth factors which are produced in its cross proximity. Now these growth factors which are basically the protein it comes and binds to the receptor. As soon as it binds to the receptor what happens is these receptor transfers this signal by a uh, fashion which is called as a signal transduction fashion into the cell. So this is basically a relay process through which the signals is transferred. Now in this relay process there are certain transcription factors which are activated which comes and binds to the specific part of the DNA or the genes which have to be synthesized, transcribed and translated. So the transcription factor comes to the DNA and binds over there. Subsequently the polymerase binds and the mRNA which are responsible for producing the protein that stimulates the cell divisions are formed. Now from this mRNA the translation occurs and the proteins that stimulate the cell divisions are formed. Now these proteins which stimulates the cell divisions are formed. So what happens is these proteins help the cell to grow into a cell division process or the mitotic or meiosis process and this is how the cell division start taking place. Now if we see the other example how exactly the growth inhibiting factor inhibits the cell division. So as the cell is growing after certain point it has to stop. So there are certain growth inhibiting factors which are produced. So these growth inhibiting factors binds to the receptors and by binding to this receptor the signals are transferred inside the cell. With the help of the processes which are called as the signal transduction process into the cell and again this is a relay process by which the signals are transferred into the nucleus. Into the nucleus there are certain transcription factor which comes and binds to these DNA and it produces the mRNA which is responsible for the production of the protein that inhibits the cell division. So the proteins which inhibits the cell divisions are produced and this, these proteins stops the cell to grow into the cell division further. So by this molecular mechanism or the general events this is how a cell division process is first initiated and subsequently it is inhibited with the help of the growth inhibiting factor. So all these things functions in a very systematic and a synchronized manner which the cells have been programmed to. So what happens in the cancerous cells that the cell goes into a uncontrolled growth fashion. So the, uh, the programmed cell death stops over there. The cell grow in a numerous fashion. So it doesn't binds to the growth inhibiting factor and the cell growth doesn't stops over there. Now if we come into the, uh, the four major types of the tumors which have been classified uh, 
uh, over here the first tumor is called as the carcinomas this is the most frequent one which have been found it is the transformation of the epithelial cells lining specially which is present in the oral cavities and the surfaces which transforms into tumorous growth these are the carcinomas uh, cancers are majorly found in the lung colon breast uh, prostate etc these particular organs the second one comes are the sarcomas which are called which are basically in the mesenchymal tissues which are responsible so these are basically present in the bone and the muscle cells then comes the hematopoietic cells and the organs which includes the leukemias which is the blood cancer uh, of the rbcs wbcs lymphomas which are basically the uh, the cancer of the lymph nodes or the lymphatic vessels then the myeloma and the last one is the called as the neuroectodermal cells which are basically the neural cells the neuroblastomas uh, glioblastomas and melanomas so these are the various four major types of the tumors which have been classified now based on them let's see the uh, the location or the point where exactly these are present so the first one are called as the carcinomas these the uh, carcinomas are present basically in the uh, areas which covers the cell surfaces so it includes the lung cancer breast cancer colon cancer uh, bladder cancer and the prostate cancer uh, in the men while the next one comes is the hematopoietic stem cell cancer which includes the leukemias basically the blood cells the lymphomas the lymph nodes and the tissues the sarcomas which are basically the cells in the supportive uh, tissues bones and the muscle cells over there now let's see what are the basic phenotypic properties uh, of the normal cells and the cancer cells so the first phenotypic property which is different in the cancer cells is the contact inhibition property so what happens is when we grow in normal cells after a mono layer these normal cells stop growing over there but these contact inhibition properties absent in the cell so they form a multiple layer of the cancer cells over there now the second property which is uh, low or absent in the cancer cells is the growth factor requirement the normal cells requires high quantity of the growth factors while the cancer cells require a low quantity of the growth factor the third property is the anchorage dependence so this is this property is present in the normal cells while it is absent in the cancer cell the fourth major property which is changed in the cancer cell is the cell cycle <coughs> checkpoints which is intact in the case of the normal cells while it is absent in the cancerous cells we just now discussed about some of the cell cycle checkpoint so these cell cycle checkpoints plays a very important role to check whether all the mechanism growth patterns have been followed properly in those particular stages or not so in the normal cells these checkpoints are present as it is while in the case of the cancerous cell these cell cycle checkpoints are absent or they have been evaded the next property which is changed in the cancer cells is the karyotypic profiling in the case of the normal cells the karyotypic profiling is normal while in the cancer cell there are abnormal karyotypic profiling which is basically looking at the patterns of or the staining patterns of the chromosome so we know that in the cancerous cells there are some kind of mutations which can be deletion insertion or chromosomal aberrations which occurs due to which the karyotypic profiling also change and the last property which is changed in the cancerous cells is called as the proliferative life span so a normal cell has got a finite life span so it will die after a particular time span or time interval this is called as the program cell death while in the case of the cancer cell this particular life span is changed up over there so this is called as the proliferative uh, life span which have been changed over there and the cancer cells become infinite over there so these are the various properties which gets changed in the cancer cells which are present in the normal cells so Uh, in this part of the lecture i have discussed about what exactly the term cancer is what are the major types of the cancer which have been found uh, which have been classified depending upon the locations and 
depending upon how the organs which have been affected or the parts which have been affected and subsequently how exactly the cell cycle checkpoints are changed in the case of the cancer which plays a very important role in modulating the cell growth and cell proliferation and what are the phenotypic properties of the normal and the cancer cell how exactly they changed up. So with this note I come to the end of my lecture thank you very much. Good afternoon dear viewers, uh, in this part of the lecture I will be talking about the introduction to cancer and uh, I will be talking about how exactly the mutations which have occurred in these uh, normal cells, how exactly they progress into the metastatic stages and then I will be talking about what are the diagnoses and the treatment regimes which are available. So in the last part of the lecture we discussed about the, uh, the types of the cancer. So cancer is basically abnormal growth of the normal cells which grow in an uncontrolled fashion. So over the uncontrolled fashion, the, along with the uncontrolled fashion, they get dislodged from their particular origin space and they move with the help of the blood vessels or the lymphatic vessels to the some other part of the body. So this particular type of the movement is called as the metastasis process. Now, uh, over here I will be first starting about how exactly a normal cells and a cancerous cells are phenotypically different. So we discussed in the last slide that there are some properties which changes in the uh, uh, cancerous cells which includes the anchorage dependence, then there is uh, contact inhibition which changes in the cancerous cells and the cell cycle checkpoints are also changed up. So if we see the picture over here, we can see a normal cell and the cancerous cell. So when we grow the normal cells, after making a uh, monolayer of these normal cells, these cells grow, uh, stops over there. So what happens is there is a very important interplay of a process which is called as the contact inhibition, which means that as soon as one cell gets in contact with the other one, the process of the growth or the proliferation stops over there. So the one cell gets the signal that I cannot grow further because there are cells which are present on the surrounding part. So the cell stops over there. So this is called as the contact inhibition. The second property which is present in the normal cells is the anchorage dependence. So these cells are anchored to particular uh, uh, surface over there. But in the case of the cancerous cells, most of the cancerous cells become spherical and they get dislodged from those particular points or the parts and with the help of the blood vessels or the lymphatic vessels they move to the some other part of the body and this particular types is called as the metastatic cancer. The third 
major property which is changed in the cancerous cells is called as the cell cycle checkpoints. So the cell cycle checkpoints are changed. So what happens is these cell cycle checkpoints are basically the checkpoints which helps to stop the cell after a particular growth phase or if the proper phasing of the cell has not taken place. So the cell cycle checkpoints gets evaded out and the cells move from one phase to the other phase and it start growing in an uncontrolled fashion. So if we see the uh, uh, picture over here, it shows a normal cells. So that we can see a normal cell which has grown in a monolayer but in a cancerous cells there are clumps which are formed. These are basically formed because the property of anchorage dependence and this uh, contact inhibitions are changed in the case of the cancerous cells. Now there are various genes which are modulated in the cancer. Some of the four most important genes are the proto-oncogenes. So proto-oncogenes are the genes which produce certain proteins or the products which normally control how often a cell divides and to what degree or extent it has to differentiate. So there are various oncogenes which are present which are abbreviated as C-onc or V-onc depending upon the location or the origin which have come up. C-onc means cellular oncogene, V-onc means viral oncogene. The second most important genes which are present are called as a tumor suppressor gene. So these genes are the one whose products normally inhibits the cell proliferation. Then comes the microRNA which are the miRNA genes which produces small RNAs that silence the expression of other genes. And the fourth one are the mutator genes whose product ensure accurate replication and maintenance of the genome. Now let's see how exactly a normal cell changes into a cancerous cell. So in a normal cell what happens is first there is a mutation uh, which inactivates the tumor suppressor gene. Some of the tumor suppressor genes are inactivated by mutation. So there is a cell proliferation which occur. Subsequently the primary tumors are formed. Then the mutation inactivates the DNA repair genes and then the mutation uh, changes the proto-oncogene which were present to produce certain proteins which control the cell division and cell growth. These proto-oncogenes change into an oncogenic part and subsequently there are mutations which inactivated, inactivates more tumor suppression. So we can see from a normal cell by a series of mutation and a sequential manner these cells proliferate in an uncontrolled fashion to form a cancerous lump or cell mass. Now over here I have shown an example of colorectal cancer which is the adenomyptosis polyopsis which is shown over here. So some of the tumor suppressor gene like the APC, DCC and P53 are mutated and one of the uh, oncogene which is the RAS oncogene have been mutated. So we can see the normal uh, colon cells in which the APC gene loss has occurred which is a tumor suppressor gene. So there is an increased cell growth which occur. Subsequently there is DNA hypomethylation due to which the adenoma are formed. Then the RAS gene mutation occurs which, which is a proto-oncogene which converts into an oncogenic part. The adenoma class 2 is formed. Then the DCC gene loss occurs which is a tumor suppressor gene. The adenoma class 3 uh, occurs, then the P53 gene loss occurs which forms the carcinoma and subsequently other gene losses causes the, uh, the growth of the cell further and the metastatic conditions occurs over there. So this is a induction of the cancer which is showing in a multiple step process and this is a cancer example which is shown in the colorectal cases. Now, the oncogenesis is a term which has been used uh, most commonly. So oncogenesis majorly occurs by the action of genes which are introduced by the viral tumors or the, there are genetic changes such as the genes or the chromosome mutation in which the tumor uh, proto-oncogenes or the tumor suppressor genes are affected and the third major cause of the oncogenesis or the uh, cause of the cancer is the exposure to mutagens or the radiation. So the three major causes are shown over here in which the first it can occur 
by introduction of the genes with the help of the tumor viruses. Second, there are genetic changes which can occur because of the proto-oncogenes and the tumor suppressor genes, certain changes. And the third one is the exposures to the mutagens and the radiation. Now, we discussed in the last presentation about a property which is called as the angiogenesis. So, angiogenesis is one of the most important property uh, in the case of the cancer biology. What happens is when the primary tumor grows over there from the blood vessels which is flowing nearby, there are certain new blood vessels which are formed and these blood capillaries invade into these primary tumor. The main objective of the formation of these new blood vessels is to provide energy and nutrients for the proper growth and maintenance of these primary tumor. Along with this one what happens is these primary tumor cells get dislodged from their particular origin point and with the help of the blood vessels they move to the some other part of the body and this particular thing is called as the metastatic condition. Now, uh, as we discussed in the oncogenesis, there are certain tumor uh, uh, viruses which inculcates or transfers the tumor uh, genes into the genomes. And for this pioneer work, one of the scientists, Python Rouse, was awarded the Nobel Prize in the year 1966 for the discovery of tumor inducing viruses. So, he discovered a virus which was named as Rouse sarcoma virus, which is a tumor inducing virus. Now, there are some of the uh, viral oncogenes uh, and the retroviral oncogenes are shown over here. Of which the first one is the SRC which uh, is isolated from the Ras saucoma virus. The origin is chicken and the type of cancer which it causes is the sarcoma. Then comes the ABL uh, uh, gene which is murine leukemia virus. The origin is mouse and it causes pre B cell leukemia. Then subsequently various genes have been identified of which uh, another uh, important one is the RAS gene which have been isolated origin has been from the rats and it causes sarcomas and erythroleukemia in many of the cases. So, these are the various retroviral and the viral oncogenes which have been classified. Now, uh, how exactly the mutations in the proto-oncogenes occur? So, what happens is to, uh, in both of the uh, proto-oncogene, when one of the mutations occurs in one of the proto-oncogenes, the cell loses its property of cell growth and uh, controlled fashion. So, proto-oncogenes are uh, basically the genes which produces certain proteins or the products that have role in stimulating cell growth and division. So, what happens is in the proto-oncogenes, they are controlled in a very programmed fashion. So, one of the mutation causes changes in these proto-oncogenes to convert them into oncogenic part so that the, uh, the growth control which was controlled in a particular fashion is lost or changed. So, the cell grows into a number of stages and it proliferates rapidly. Now, some of the proto-oncogenes uh, are shown over here. One of them is the which occurs in the growth factor which is called as the SIS. Uh, and it causes the growth of the PDGF B chain growth factor. PDGF is basically the platelet derived growth factor and subsequently the various proto-oncogenes are shown over here and the exact position where exactly the effect have been shown. Some of them are the growth factors, some of them are the receptors, protein tyrosine or the protein serine threonine kinases. Some of them are the receptors which lacks the protein kinase activity. Then some of them are the membrane associated G protein activated by the surface receptor. Some of them are the cytoplasmic regulators, nuclear transcription factors, etc. Now, let us come into the tumor suppressor gene over here. So, tumor suppressor gene, uh, these are the genes which encode the proteins that inhibits the cell growth and division. So, tumor suppressor gene plays a very important role in our body. So, what happens is they control the growth of the cells in an uncontrolled fashion or division. Now, the tumor suppressor genes are present in two copy number. What happens is in the, during the normal growth control fashion, uh, one of the genes get mutated. So, after this one, there is a second mutation which occurs 
in another of the uh, tumor suppressor gene. So both the tumor suppressor genes mutated. So what happens is they, it won't encode for the protein that inhibit the cell growth and the division. As the cell won't be inhibited or stopped from growing, what will happen is the cell will go into an uncontrolled fashion growth over there and the cell will proliferate easily. Now, some of the mutations are shown over here. So, we can see a tumor suppressor gene in which the normal growth inhibiting property protein has been produced which uh, controls the cell division under a controlled fashion. While over here, there are certain mutations which have been formed due to which a defective non-functional tumor suppressor gene is produced, a protein is produced. This protein is unable to control or inhibit the cell growth or the proliferation and the cell grows rapidly in an uncontrolled fashion. So some of the tumor suppressor gene uh, are shown over here. The first one is the APC which is present in the colorectal cancer and it, it basically the proposed function of the APC gene is it binds to the uh, carnitine acting as a transcription factor. Subsequently there are different um, genes which have been shown over here of which one of the main one is the BRCA1 which is present in the breast cancers which is responsible for the DNA repair and it causes the breast cancer. Now there are different uh, NF1, TP53 which is present, mutation which is present in the sarcomas, lymphomas etc. Then there is RB which is the retinal uh, tumor which binds to the E2F factor which is the cell cycle transcription regulator and the uh, disease which it causes is the retinoblastoma. So we will discuss about the RB tumor suppressor gene in detail. Now, before going into the RB tumor suppressor gene, we should know about another important gene which is the P53. So P53 is a major tumor suppressor gene and it has been said that about 50% of the human cancer have found that they have got a mutated P53 gene. So what happens is as soon as there is a DNA lesion or DNA damage which occurs, so what happens is it uh, is activates the p53 gene so the p53 gene produces proteins which are called as the p53 protein these goes and activates the gene which produces the p21 protein now these p21 protein what they do is they come and binds to the cyclin or the cdk which helps in the transfer of the cell from the g1 to s phase as the DNA has got some kind of mutation, so if the cell goes from the G1 to the S phase, that mutated DNA will be replicated and all the progeny cells which will be produced will be having a replicated uh, form of that mutated DNA. So it has to be stopped in the G1 phases. So what happens is this P21 protein which have been form, uh, formed due to the activation of the P53 protein it comes and binds to the cyclin or the CDK. As soon as it binds to the cyclin and the CDK, it stops the cell at the G1 to S checkpoint. So the cell cannot move into the S phase. So what happens is the cell remains in the G1 checkpoint and as it repairs the DNA, then only the cell will move from the G1 to the S phase. So this is how the P53 actually modulates or checks the cell from going from one particular phase to the other phase. Now we will discuss over here the tumor uh, suppressor gene, uh, the RB gene which majorly causes the retinoblastoma. So retinoblastoma is basically a childhood cancer of the eye. So this develops during the period from the birth to the age of 4 years and it is a most common eye tumor found in the children. Now what happens exactly in the retinoblastoma? So there are different two forms of the retinoblastoma which have been said. One is called as the sporadic retinoblastoma. The other one is called as the hereditary retinoblastoma. So there are two genes, RB genes which have been shown over here. In the case of the sporadic retinoblastoma, what is done is the normal cell growth is controlled with the help of the retinoblastoma. Now, when there is a two mutations which occur in the sporadic retinoblastoma, both these normal genes are lost and what happens is there is a loss of cell growth and the eye tumors start developing up. While in the case of the hereditary retinoblastoma, 
in which the child is a carrier which carries one of the mutated gene or a, a lost function gene what happens is there is a mutation which occurs in the normal genes and the both the genes are lost so there is a loss of growth uh, growth control uh, and the eye tumor start developing this model system was given by nutson in the year 1971 and it is referred as the two hit mutation model system now what are the uh, modifying or the uh, avoiding risk factors uh, which are basically related to the cancer so uh, it is generally recommended that uh, one should uh, stop taking the tobacco or inhale the tobacco overweight or the obese condition is one of the causes of cancer unhealthy diet with low fruit and vegetable intakes is one of the uh, causes lack of physical activity alcohol consumption there are number of sexually transmitted uh, infections such as the infection which is transferred with the help of the human papilloma virus also causes cancer then number of cancer have been associated to hepatitis b viruses urban air pollution indoor smoke from the household solid of solid fuels so all these are the modifying and the risk factors which leads to the cancer and more than 30% of the cancer deaths could be prevented by modifying or avoiding these key risk factors now we come into the last part of the presentation which is the diagnosis and the what are the treatment regimes the major diagnosis is uh, the pathological examination subsequently there are various imagings which can be done so one of the most important one uh, which is done is the called as the pet scan ct scan so pet scan is basically the positron emission tomography scan which is um, uh, complemented with a computed tomography it helps to determine and detect the stage of the cancer and determine the metastatic how the cancer has spread out and it helps to evaluate the effectiveness of the cancer medicines and the drugs so initially the patient initially a patient is checked upon how exactly uh, the cancer has spread out and subsequently they go into these pet scan and the various uh, regimes are then checked up sorry to interrupt you sir we have a call over yes, here hello hello hmm hello hello ah ji aap apna sawal puche what is the most important factor of cancer the most important factor what is the most important factor of cancer what is a good name factor of cancer hello you are requested to please kindly switch off or Rock turn one. off your uh, television yes we have heard your question he uh, wants to know the factors behind the cancer yeah. actually uh, there is no single uh, point factor which can be associated to a particular cancer there are multiple factors which are there many of the cancers are genetic which means that they are passed on from the uh, parents to the child also there are number of can uh, uh, the factors which are the environmental factors like we are living in a environment which is polluted we are eating the uh, vegetables which are full of the pesticides so all these are the modifying of the risk factors which are accumulating in the body and subsequently these chemicals what they are doing is they are bringing some kind of mutation or the changes in the chromosomal or the gene level which are causing the uh, the cell to go into a cancerous state and it evades the normal process of uh, the uh, development process and it goes into a cancerous state so at the point uh, no one can pinpoint to one particular a major factor which is associated to the cancer because cancer is not a single mutation which is occurring in the cell it is a multiple multi step process which occurs so number of cells number of genes are mutated like the tumor suppressor gene proto oncogene there are subsequent growth control genes which are changed so a number of factors are uh, acting over a period of long period of time due to which the person goes into a cancerous state Dear friends, thank you. Thanks for calling us. Dear friends, you can also call us at one eight double zero double one zero four three zero to ask questions from Dr. Amit Bhattacharya. Yes, sir. We were discussing about the PET scan. We have another caller from Bihar. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. We were discussing about PET scan. We have another caller from Bihar. Hello. Hello. 
हेलो यस प्लीज टेल योर नेम एंड आस्क हेलो यस हेलो जी आपसे रिक्वेस्ट करना चाहेंगे हेलो जी आप अपने टेलीविजन का वॉल्यूम कम कर दें प्लीज हेलो जी आपकी आवाज हम तक पहुंच रही है आप अपने टेलीविजन का वॉल्यूम कम कर दीजिए हेलो 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 यस नाउ यू मे आस्क यू क्वेश्चन प्लीज व्हाट इज योर नेम एंड व्हाट इज योर क्वेश्चन हाँ जी जी अपना नाम बताएं और अपना क्वेश्चन पूछें जी मेरा नाम राम कुमार पटेल है जी राम कुमार जी सवाल पूछिए सवाल पूछिए जरा मैं ये डीए के कोर्स के बारे में कुछ जानना चाहता हूँ किस कोर्स के बारे में जानना चाहते हैं जी किस कोर्स के बारे में आप जानना चाहते हैं जी डीएलएड के कोर्स के बारे में जानना चाहता हूँ जी आपकी आवाज बिल्कुल ढंग से हम हम तक नहीं पहुँच रही है आप ढंग से बताएं कौन सा कोर्स वैसे हम आपको बताना चाहेंगे यहाँ पर हम कैंसर के बारे में कैंसर क्या है इस डिजीज इस बीमारी के बारे में चर्चा कर रहे हैं इससे संबंधित नहीं आ पा रहा है हम कैंसर के बारे में यहाँ पर चर्चा कर रहे हैं अगर आपके पास विषय संबंधित सवाल है तो आप जरूर पूछे क्या आपके पास सवाल है जी कॉल डिस्कनेक्ट हो गई और किसी प्रकार के कोर्स के बारे में जानने की कोशिश कर रहे थे ये सभी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द पेट स्कैन या सो पेट स्कैन इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इम्पोर्टेंट स्कैनिंग विच इज डन नाउ इट इज इट्स टू चेक वेदर हाउ एग्जैक्टली दैंसर सेल्स हैव मूव आउट और स्प्रेड इन टू दियस पार्ट ऑफ द बॉडी एंड सब्सिक्वेंटली how the uh, the treatments which have given to those cancer patient how exactly the patient is coming up with those particular treatment regimes so uh, pet scan in the pet scan the whole body is scanned up and uh, there are certain uh, uh, elements which are injected in the body and which checks that how exactly uh, the cancer is spreading up and with the help of the imaging or the tomographic images we can check out the various organs or the parts of the body Uh, how they have spread out now the cancer uh, treatment regimes also sorry to interrupt up, yeah. you once again we have a caller yes hello 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 uh, ji apna naam bataye apna sawal puchhe hello ji ji apna sawal puchhe hello hello mera naam hai rak kumar hai जी बताएं सवाल पूछे कैंसर पे क्या इफेक्ट हमारे शरीर पे जो कैंसर पे क्या इफेक्ट पड़ता है तो पूछना चाहता हूँ कैंसर का इफेक्ट व्हाट इज द इफेक्ट ऑफ कैंसर इन आवर बॉडी जी यही बताने की हम कोशिश कर रहे हैं ये जानना चाहते हैं कि कैंसर का क्या इफेक्ट पड़ता है हम आपको बता रहे हैं डिटेल में बता रहे हैं कि कौन से कारण होते हैं किस वजह से कैंसर होता है हमने इस पूरे लेक्चर में आपको इस बारे में बताया है फिलहाल हम इसके निदान यानी कि इसके ट्रीटमेंट के बारे में बताने जा रहे हैं डियर फ्रेंड्स अगर आपने इस लेक्चर को मिस कर दिया है तो बताना चाहेंगे इस लेक्चर को हम जल्द ही यूट्यूब पर अपलोड करेंगे अगर आप किसी कारणवश इस लेक्चर को नहीं देख पाए हैं तो आप इसे दोबारा देख सकते हैं ये सर लेट्स मूव फॉरवर्ड बिकॉज वी हैव लेस टाइम लेफ्ट ओवर हेयर हम so uh, basically the cancer treatment uh, is followed into four major uh, treatment regimes the first one is the surgery then comes the radiotherapy chemotherapy and the hormonal therapy depending upon the stages of the cancer the various therapies are either done in a alone or in a combination fashion so we'll come into each of them one by one the first one is the uh, tumor surgery is in which the removal of the cancerous tissues from the body is done so there are local treatments which are done then subsequently the removed body part is diagnosed staging and the various histopathological studies are done on those parts to check what exactly the stage of the cancer was how exactly the uh, the spread has occurred so this the first one is the tumor surgery then comes the radiation therapy in which the high energy x rays are given to the kill the cancerous cell so along with the cancerous cells the local normal cells all also uh, get killed up so there are number of side effects which are there uh, along with this radiation therapy the, so some of the side effects are shown over here so there is a skin irritation hair loss digestive problem so the person suffer from digestive problem fatigueness urinary bladder problem sexual and fertility problem bleeding and infections because the immune count decreases down so a person is susceptible to various infections the uh, the hair loss uh, which is uh, called as the phenomena is called as the alopecia 
So it happens due to these uh, treatment regimes, the radiation, but the hair loss occurs in the first treatment. Subsequently, the patient gets back to his or her normal state and it grows back after three to six months after treatment is over. Now, the third uh, major thing is the chemotherapy where a variety of drugs are used to kill the cancerous cells. Uh, some of the most uh, important chemotherapeutic uh, drugs which are being used are the fluorouracil, doxorubicin and palcitexin. So they are used in the various types of the cancers. So uh, along with the cancerous cells, they damage the healthy cells also. So uh, they have got a number of side effects attached to them. And the, uh, the side effects occurs is there is a suppression of the bone marrow, low numbers of white blood cells occurs, low numbers of the red blood cells occurs, then their platelets counts also decreases down. So these along with them there is a hormonal therapy which is the with them. So depending upon the stages and how pathogenic or uh, metastatic the cancer is, the doctor decides upon which particular surgery treatment regimes they have to start on. So with this note, I come to the end of my lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so very much for giving us a precious session. And dear friends, thanks for calling us. You can become part of our live sessions by calling us and asking questions on varied subject. Uh, friends, if any of your question has left unanswered, then you can mail us your questions at info.ec at nic.in. We would love to solve your questions. When next time, Dr. Amit Bhattacharya visits our studio. Till then, take care. Goodbye. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you once again.